Welcome to the Free From Wall Street Podcast, where we share how we have done over $200 million in real estate deals to create, preserve, and pass on generational wealth without the roller coaster ride of the stock market. If you're ready to start investing with purpose, visit freefromwallstreet.com. But for now, let's dive into this episode. Cool. Welcome back to the Free From Wall Street Podcast. My name is Steve Lidman. Today, special guest, Jim Shields. I met Jim at an event where I heard him speak about something that has literally been life-changing for my wife and I. And he, he's got some great books out there, 18 Summers, The Family Board Meeting. And if you can't tell from the titles of those books, this is a guy who's focused on investing, but not just in real estate, investing in family and in people and in kids. And it has been an amazing uh, journey. I'm excited to, to jump in here today. Jim, thanks so much to, for jumping on with me. How are you doing? No problem. No, it's good to be here, Steve. Good to see you again. Yeah, you as well. And we're going to be together in just another couple of weeks. So yeah. it'll, be, uh, it'll be good to catch up. Absolutely. But I just, I just did a, another podcast that'll come out before this one. And I was talking about a marriage conference that I just did with my wife. Oh, very cool. And, um, and I just was like, man, what a great follow-up to the marriage conference and investing in your marriage to what we're going to talk about today. So why don't you give people a little bit of a background, who you are, what you're doing, what you're focused on, and uh, just give people some insight into who Jim is. Yeah, like you, Steve, uh, corporate America didn't suit me. So I left it 23 years ago into real estate investing. I started in California and then made my way to Florida about 17 years ago. And uh, we do heavy volume of build to rent projects, some other development projects in RV resorts. Uh, but about 10 years ago, I started uh, kind of a, a, a side passion project with my wife called 18 Summers. Uh, because what I was finding was, and it goes back to my family story, I now have five children, was there are a lot of people at these events that you and I were going to, which are great. And they show you how do we invest? How do we market? How do we sell? How do we troubleshoot? Uh, how do we use technology? But there was very little giving rhythm and focus to your family life. And I met a lot of guys who I had looked up to who their balance sheet was huge, but their home life was a disaster. And honestly, that scared the hell out of me. So in my own needs, I started to uh, look at ways that were more predictable, more understandable and easy to use to help my family life. And as I started to share them, it was real organic. People were like, oh, you got to tell that story about your family. You got to tell that thing that you do with your, your sons every quarter. I thought it was too simplistic. Um, but I went from this real estate investor to this quote unquote family educator. I have no degrees in family therapy or counseling. And I think that's why people in our space are attracted because I just try to teach direct from my good and bad experiences and share things that you don't have to be a, 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 a master's or, or doctorate in family therapy to understand. So we're always trying to help um, entrepreneurs like ourselves, not only succeed in business, but succeed at home and give them easy, practical ways to do that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I put your book down and I looked at my wife and I just smirked at her and I said, it's so simple. I can't yeah. believe I've never thought about how impactful and simple this could be. But you know what, Jim, what you've done is distilled down very big concepts into a very uh, manageable way to implement something, which frankly, the most successful ideas that I've ever had in my, in my business are those types of ideas, yeah, right? It's like right. the aha, man, I can't believe how simple that is. Yeah, it translates over. I, I was saying the solution doesn't have to be as complicated as we've made the problem. And sometimes us, you know, high flying, fast thinking entrepreneurs, we confuse the hell out of family life when if we just put a couple of things into practice, it's not going to get us all the way there. And we're never going to be perfect. I mean, take perfect family out of your vocabulary. I don't know who made that saying up. It's a totally... Right horrible saying. It, it, I've never met one in 10 years of this work. You know, but if you just put a few things into practice and stay consistent, it'll get you 80% of the way there. There is a huge shift, you know, just like in your business. If you weren't looking at your numbers every week or meeting with your CFO, man, your business is going to have some pretty uh, unpredictable outcomes over the next six months. But as you do, you start to steer the ship better. You start to see things. You start to connect better. You start to make better decisions. Um, and, and the same thing happens with your family. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that was something that hit me when you were speaking. It's like, hey, you, you guys are doing quarterly meetings with your with your whole team. You're doing monthly meetings. You're doing probably every Monday meetings, right? To do daily huddles and all this other stuff. It's like, well, where does that intentionality follow in your family? And it was just one of those things where, you know, for me, walking into even my kitchen, right? And bringing my phone with me and having my kids go, hey, dad, hey, dad. And I'm like, huh, I'm not present, right? I'm just not, I'm checked out. And then I'll try to be like specifically intentionally present during dinner. Like, hey, feed me all this information. How was your day? Tell me what you're, you know, and I'm, I'm present for 20 minutes. And, um, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs fall into this trap. And I think it might've been you, right? That talks about the entrepreneurial lie of yeah. I'm doing all this for my family. Doing it for my family. And, and what happens is, you know, I've had a couple of people come to this realization who have gone way up, gone way down, had divorce, and they've had some sort of um, rekindling with their family. And what the kids basically said from the highs to the lows, say, we didn't ask for all that. All we wanted was you. And that can mm. be a blessing and a curse to hear something like that. But we say that, like, we're just doing this for our family. We're just... But if we're not around and they actually want to spend time with us, if it puts us to a point where, hey, I'm, I'm the last person, Steve, we've hung around, talked to real estate deals. I love ambition. I would not know how to tell people not to be ambitious. But I also know that there's, there's certain times where you have to be completely and totally unavailable for your family. And if not, you start to become a stranger. You start to feel like, like a part-time disciplinarian and just an ATM machine. And that causes bitterness and sadness and resentment. And I've seen this time and time again. And there are ways to overcome that. Um, but, but when we, we kind of, we say it's all for our family and then we start to kind of game film back or take inventory, we're like, gosh, we're never around. And when we are, we're kind of cranky. Like we're the kind of like vice principal we didn't like growing up. <laughs> And, you know, and, and, or, you know, we're just, we're, we're not being fun. Like fun is completely left the building. We're just showing up to, to be a disciplinarian. And that's, I don't know, that's not what I want to see when I come to the end, especially, you know, our name of our company is 18 summers. And a mentor taught me that, you know, the average person will spend 85% of the quality time they ever have with their children by the end of the 18th summer. Mm. And it's pretty easy to see that. I mean, you know, because things start to, you know, delineate because they start to go, they're, they're older, they have their own social lives, they're going off to school or whatever. And so, you, you know, if you really want to do things right and make the most of that time, you got you in those important building years of family, you cannot push them to the side for a decade and expect it to work out. That's the entrepreneurial lie. They'll understand I'm going to go heads down for five to 10 years and then it'll come back to me. It won't. I've seen that tons of times with lots of people. And again, everything I do, Steve, is out of a, a healthy um, awareness now. And at first it was a fear, like that could easily be me and I don't want it right. to be. Yeah, amazing lesson. So let's dive into kind of the book and what you're ch teaching people to do. Um, my wife and my oldest just did their first family board meeting. So they, I, I came home and said to my wife, I said, well, how was it? And she was like, incredible. You yeah. Know, it's, it was, again, it's a simple peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, we, I'm just stealing stuff from, from the entrepreneur side. You know, not all entrepreneur things will, will go good into family life. Like I do a whole thing on delegation, you know, delegation in business for you and I is so pinnacle. But don't do that in family life because you're going to be pretty miserable when you become that stranger and that outsider and go, right? why I don't have a relationship. But for some of these other things, like rhythms. You know, when you set certain rhythms in your business and you stick with them, you start to see that trajectory of growth. It's the same thing with family life. Mm. So the whole, the whole premise of our book is our family, our children are our most important investors or, or key team members in our life. So let's give them that priority. I'm going to treat them like I would those people. So every quarter, I have a very intentional meeting with each of my kids for at least a half a day. Um, and there's only really three principles around it, which we can go through today. And I think those principles are something that people can really hook into and take away, whether they read the book or not. I mean, to my credit, um, the book is very short. 
I'm going to give myself credit on that because everyone's too damn busy and I'm ADD. Yeah. So how am I going to write a long book? <laughs> it was <But> great. <laughs> I listened to the audio version and yeah. it, it was fantastic. I got to get out on the treadmill and I mean, go get this audio book or go get this book because it's, it's definitely easy to, to read through, but man, there's just such tangible facts in there. So go ahead. What are the yeah, three? I think, yeah. Some of the example stories are helpful, but I'm saying, even if they don't, I think if we talk about these three principles real quick today, that'll give them something to chew on and really take home and use. Cool. So um, one of the first things, as you said, gosh, it's so simple. One of the first principles that I learned for strengthening family life that almost no one talks about, it's just not out there, um, is the power of one-to-one. Uh, you got to separate the parts to strengthen the whole. You know, I think I joked with you, you know, I came from an Jersey boy, big Irish Catholic family, which means I have like 7,000 cousins, right? That's great. <laughs> and those are good times. But the real potency to a relationship happens in the one-on-one -on -one time. I mean, you and I did not want to talk about puberty in front of our little sister. I mean, you know, shoot us now, right? right. So you want to have these conversations and even fun. What happens when you have one-on-one -on -one time with each of your children, it takes away sibling rivalry. It moves away if they lean more closer to your spouse because you've been away at work. Your friend's not invited. Their best friend's not invited. It puts the magnifying glass on that relationship in a positive way. And it almost feels unfair. The advantage you're having like, wow, I didn't get this as a kid. I'm giving this now. And, and I've heard about marriages being saved. Children putting things on the table or teens putting things on the table they thought would never be discussed. And that all starts with one-on-one -on -one time. So mm. you got to separate the parts to strengthen the whole. You got to start scheduling one-on-one -on -one time with each of your family members if you really want to strengthen the whole family. Because if you separate the parts, you strengthen the whole. Um, so I encourage people start scheduling one-on-one -on -one time with your family, each of your kids. That's what I do every quarter. So let me ask you a little bit on that subject um, <clears throat> selfishly. So I have three kids and my wife and I are both doing board meetings with the kids. So in a quarter that breaks out to every other Saturday is a family board meeting day, yeah. right? At least how we have it scheduled out. Mm -hmm. um, but my brother-in-law has six kids. You have five. How yeah. are you, how are you um, scheduling that throughout the quarter to calendar it, to make sure that it, it fits in there? Yeah. You know what? That which we schedule gets done. Mm. When, when you and I, Steve are sitting down, we're like, all right, Hey, you're coming here in, in next month. Let's get together gosh, you're only here two days. That's really hard to do. So we're looking at a small thing. Or you look at a week with your family and go, holy cow, I got three kids. How am I going to schedule three of these? Don't look at those three days or that week. You look at the quarter. And when you lay that big calendar out as a quarter and you drop the pins down, it's easier than you think, even for your, even for your uh, brother-in-law with six kids. Mm. Because we have that big 90-day window, right? You put the pin down for a half a day and say, hey, it's, it's a non-negotiable appointment. Unless there's something seriously wrong, this is where I'm going to be. And if you don't put that pressure on one week or two weeks, it's easier to drop in the calendar than you think. Now, yeah. I also cheat where I won't always do Saturdays. I know a lot of people who, want to start, who started later with this to get their teens involved. Is it really a terrible thing if they miss school? once a year or twice a year to have a day with you. And that's something they're going to remember 50 years from now and strengthen the relationship and go over lessons, probably way more important than what's going to be taught at school that day. Not for me. Uh, so oh, I'll cheat into the week for both of us. Um, you know, I remember there was times I even picked some of the, my older boys up from school halfway through and we went out for the afternoon. So we're I, doing a half day. Yeah. And I rushed my work through and man, I was focused because I wanted to get it done um, and, and then spend this time. So I, it's not as hard as you think. Uh, one, one exception I do want to say, your kids start to move away. They're over 18. They're living out. Man, if you do one day a year with them, one day a year, one-on-one, -on -one, you're ahead of 90% of the people I know out there. I mean, yeah. I know I didn't with my dad do a, a day a year, just the two of us doing something. Uh, no. so, so that's a way too, if they're away uh, and above that 18, you still do a day a year. It can really keep the relationship forged. Such great uh, perspective. And I think it's a paradigm shift for a lot of people because they have this, oh, I only have so much time to myself. And it's like, well, it's because you're not giving that time to yourself, right? You're not putting it in the calendar as a non-negotiable. And once it's in there, it becomes much easier, right? And I think as entrepreneurs, 
it's so healthy for us to recognize that if we take a day off, especially to spend it with the most important people in our lives. And when we come back to work the next day, oh, nothing man, has fallen you, off the rails. You're like, you're in fuego. You're in fuego. Think about it. You know, let's say you did this. You said, I'm going to pick my kid up at noon from eight to 12. You're going to be hustling your ass and like getting stuff done. Any of that little bit of distraction or, or maybe, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Procrastination. I'm procrastinating on the word procrastination. That's pretty classic. Um, <laughs> you know, so even if you, you know, all that goes away because you want to get there. And that next day when you get back to work and you've had a meaningful day with your son or daughter, I don't know about you, but man, I'm pumped. I'm like, I'm feeling on track, on purpose, refueled. And yeah. it's like, I didn't miss anything. Entrepreneurs yep. don't wait out the clock. We make the most of the clock. Or yeah. Something. Awesome. Cool. Awesome perspective. All right. Lay on us number two. Yeah. Intermittent tech fasting. That's something we came up with. And it's really, that's what the whole rule is about. Number two is, this is something that I see separating families just to the highest degree. Technology is wonderful, but you got to have uh, moments of complete and total unavailability on both sides, you and us. As you talked about, I've been that guy walking into the kitchen, your kids try to talk to you and you fake like you hear them. And we're like, oh yeah, we got away with that. No, we didn't. They, they know. Um, and, and we can't be, it's called that half, half in parenting. You know, you're, you're, you get that buzz in your pocket. Your brain's just gone into the four deals you're working on and you're ready to pounce on someone or do this or take this step. You're not there. And what I've learned is if I'm not telling you to give up technology, that'd be crazy. How would you and I be talking today? However, I am saying there's just like intermittent fasting, you know, it's good for your health weight maintenance, muscle rebuilding, organ revitalization. You're not giving up eating, but you're choosing to only eat between this time and this time. So I started to do these tech fasts for our half day um, board meetings with my kids. So, you know, I'm on this for four to five hours. My phone was going off or it was going on airplane mode. Now I probably just gave a few entrepreneurs a heart attack out there where oh, <laughs> my phone's not on, you know, and I'm going, well, look, then we got to really discuss something. If you can't have your business blow up, if you're on with your, your son or daughter for four hours, there's a problem and we got to work bigger. But the best part of this is most of the time when people do this, Steve, they're like, holy shit, nothing blew up. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. so freeing. There were three issues and they worked it out because they couldn't get a hold of me. You know? <laughs> that's true. And that's, that is the God's honest truth. I mean, when I come back to the office, I'll see some, some emails or some boxers or whatever. And it's like, by the time I go to respond, I get a, never mind, I got it. We got which, it. Yeah. You know, how often do we interject ourselves into the business, like unwillingly and not needingly? Because we're just responsive, right? So, yeah. I, and I do this with my wife now too, when we go out to, to our dates and yeah. it, we started a while back and it's just, hey, we're just going to leave the phones in the glove box. I'll yeah. literally tell the babysitter, catch this millennials. You can tell the babysitter what restaurant you're going to and leave a phone number there. there and if go. the hostess comes to your, then she can still get a hold of you, right? Without you yeah, I love thinking it. that you always have to be accessible. But yeah, this is this is the new badge of honor, the accessibility, and then people get upset that you're not accessible. But it's so impactful to be able to do that with your wife and your kids for just yeah. a couple hours. Nothing's going to burn down, right? I've learned this over, and I know entrepreneurs, you, don't, you might not believe it, but trial and error of this thing, you can test and measure it. And, you know, just turn it off, put it away. I love the idea that you said, hey, you can take out your phone for a photo to capture the moment. Yeah. I love that. But tech fasts, it's... Um, yeah, you and do everybody on, you do on my like you, Steve. I do them on my board means date night, and for date night, you're hitting the nail on the head. Everyone should have a date night once a week, same bat time, same bat channel. Again, I'm ADD. I'll screw it up, Steve. Every Wednesday tonight, five thirty to eight thirty, I'm going on a date with my wife. My phone's not invited. Everyone knows. Don't schedule me on a podcast or an investor call. That's date night, and I don't mess oh, it up that way because it's the same week. But the phone goes off. The phone yeah. goes off for our board meetings. I have, I have about two hour window at the end of every day where I play with the kids, phone is off. And I make it that our whole house has their electronics off. And the teams awesome. at first grumbled, but I'm like, you're not gonna miss anything for two hours. We can all be more connected. I think yeah. to show my own demise on this, there was a time, it was the end of the day, I was going into my two hour window and uh, I started to get on the trampoline with my five-year-old. My five-year-old daughter, Maggie, loves the trampoline. We're getting on it. And, and this, um, the, the damn buzzer goes off. I didn't turn off my phone. I usually leave it in the car and I hear. Dzz, 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 dzz. So what do I do, Steve? Of course I pull it out and man, someone just screwed up a simple closing. I mean, this was like rock simple 
and it got screwed up. So what am I doing now? I'm swearing under my breath. I'm going, how do I fix this? And all of a sudden my daughter said this to me, I'll never forget this. She looked at me and said, daddy, why, why are you so mad at me? Mm. And it just shows we think we're better than we are. I was totally wrapped up in this real estate deal. My five-year-old is standing there. She cannot decipher. She's now taking that on. And I hope that sinks in with people because I've done that more times than I should admit. But man, is it a remember, you are not that good. Have total, complete and total unavailability with your family at certain times. Tech fasts are a good thing. Yeah, good, good stuff, man. Really good. And number three. Yeah, last one. You know, when I go on to these, these days every quarter, I let my kids create the day. If we're going fishing, if we're having a princess party, whatever, whatever the kids want to do, I let them create the day. I go all in and have fun. It's not about what I enjoy to do. It's what they like to do. This is where you'll start to see their real interests and talents and, and directional things. I could go into other stories and another thing of how this helped me form kind of the education for each of our kids individually, because they start mm. to un, unveil what they're really interested in. If you let them choose these fun days and even better, they usually open up with conversation and really the rule for number three is let them plan the day. And what I've started to teach people, Steve, is be open to two things, which us stubborn entrepreneurs that think we have immunity are not open to, sincere compliments and a genuine apology. I mean, we are all, we all think since we, we work hard, we do this, we're immune from apologizing. Well, now I get immunity from that. Yeah, I was angry, but I'm running two businesses. If you will start with your wife on the date night, or on, on these board meetings to do more sincere compliments and genuine apologies, not, not contrived, the relationship will take a whole new level. I used to suck at apologizing, Steve. I was terrible at it. Um, the more I've started to swallow my pride, the more meaningful my relationships have gotten. And it's a growth in humility, right? It's it you get you're you're humble enough to say you're sorry, you you mean it. One of the things from this marriage conference that we just took away over the last couple of days was, you know, unity is the love language of the spirit. And mm, I like that. What we like, what we need, what one of our core uh, desires is as human beings is we want to be fully known and fully trusted and not judged. And I think that when you offer those apologies and offer those sincere compliments, you're letting the other people know in your life that, hey, I see you, I know you, and the only thing I have is love for you, not, not judgment. Yeah, and that's really just, well said. We're constantly yeah. on the defensive, right, of like, hey, I, 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 I don't want to apologize. It makes me feel bad. But it's a muscle. Like when you start to it work is. it out, right? right? I've gotten so much better over at apologizing over the years, but it was really difficult for me back in the day too, because pride. Yeah, it was. That pride is, man, that is a, that is a double-edged sword where both ends stick into you at the end. You know what I mean? And um, it's not easy, but as we're both saying, it's worthwhile. And our kids are tired, especially our kids. We are always, in, again, usually with the best intentions, we have our next 50 lectures planned of what they have to do to improve this or take this more seriously or step up in this. Man, why not just put a rest on those, say less, and start to give a few more you know, sincere compliments and genuine apologies and see what happens. See where the relationship is in a month, six weeks, six months. Um, those, those chances to actually give advice will probably come up more than if you say, I have a lecture for you. It's like, oh God, <laughs> you know, no, no kid wants that. <laughs> such a good point. I mean, and so I love the simplicity of like, hey, let them plan the activity because then you get to see what their interests are. Like, ah, oh, aha moment, right? Like, oh, you, you, let's go do this with daddy. It's like, well, dad, I don't want to do that. But they won't say that because they just want time with you. So yeah. giving them the freedom to say, hey, I, I want to plan this. You know, I, I just got back before we jumped on a call. I live in a little golf course community and we have a little driving range down the street with putting oh, and, nice. yeah, yeah. and my, my, my four-year-old and my two-year-old are asleep. And I said, hey, I have an hour before my next meeting. And I said to my eight-year-old, I said, hey, you want to go hit some golf balls? And, you know, I hear, I hear Jim in the back of my head, right, as she's hitting <laughs> golf balls, like, hey, don't, I don't need to coach her, right? She's eight. She's not going to the PGA as far as I can tell. She is just out there having fun, right? Yeah. And like whenever she turns around, I'm just high-fiving her and applauding her and saying how great of a job she's doing. The inner dad in me, right? The inner entrepreneur in me is going, hey, 
Maybe don't drop your shoulders so much. Maybe turn your hips a little bit more. But you know, stance. But it's like, hey, <laughs> she's having a blast. She thinks she's doing yeah. great with it. And and it knocks me out of that level of like trying to manage everything. It yeah. gets me into a fun mindset too, because that's all we're, we're just having a good time, right? When you said fun has left the building before, like I never want my kids to look at me and say fun has left the building. Like I just want to yeah. have a blast with my kids. No, and that's and that's how we but but again, there's a lot of nobility and fun usually leaves the building because we're very we're also we don't only we're protectors. We feel very protective. So if we're helping them and improving them in this, we're protecting them more. But what I've learned is, yeah, protection is great, but sometimes you just got to love. And a kid's love language is fun. I mean, you laugh and be goofy. The other stuff will come. But if you start without that, man, it's really going to be hard for them to take any advice from you, take any counsel from you to truly protect them, uh, just in my humble experience. No, amazing stuff. Um, so, Jim, where can people find you? Where can they go buy the books? Like, what, one, what are you doing? Are you doing speaking engagements? Or, you know, what, what should people look to you to help you know, with? Jim- yeah, I mean, you, you can look us up on 18summers.com. We also have a podcast, uh, the 18 Summers Family Podcast. That's that's picking up some some good Oh, man, with you and your lovely wife, I've listened to it every week. We're just so many good nuggets in there. Good stuff. Make sure you're listening to Jim's podcast. No, too. I appreciate that, Steve. And so that's something of, of great enjoyment. And uh, they can go to 18summers.com. You know, since the pandemic, with the exception of a few talks that you're at, I really um, – got off the speaking uh, for a little while to spend more time at home. So I'm going to start doing a few more talks. I got a few scheduled, but I'm, I'm really focusing at home and taking more interviews like this. So I can actually, uh, you know, go from hanging out with my a Jersey buddy to going in the pool with my kids in 20 minutes, you know, it's, it's a nice blend for me. So, and so then right date now, night, you got a packed day. It's yeah, a pretty nice day. <laughs> we're getting it all in. We're getting it all in. So, and it's not, it's not uh it's not not without it's it's fun. So, um, but yeah, I think that's a good thing. And, and just with overall, and just please take that pressure of being a perfect father or a perfect mother off the table or perfect marriage, like all that. I don't know who put that word perfect there, but I, the, if I've uncovered anything in the last ten years, Steve, that saying has done a lot of damage because mm. I haven't met one. So it's not about perfection; it's about bridging our imperfections and making the most of the time we have. Um, yeah, it's having fun. Apologies adventures, but it's not going to be perfect. I, I just don't, I haven't seen that yet. So if you take that pressure off yourself, off your spouse, off your children, I think it's going to start to be more fun and more meaningful. Yeah. I'm really excited. My four-year-old made her list and she wants to go go-karting with me. So That's I'm going to strap her into the side of my car and we'll go rip around a little bit. But Jim, okay. thank you so much for your time, man. Um, you know, go to 18summers.com. Make sure you're looking and grabbing Jim's book. It, it, it truly is life-changing. And I love that it's genius in its simplicity. If you can't figure out a way to put this stuff into your calendar, arguably it's because you don't want to. I love the fact that you can do it and you can make it intentional. And my kids, I mean, guys, just start doing this with your kids and hear the excitement. My eight-year-old freaked out when she knew we were going to go spend four hours together with no phones. That was, that was enough for her. No phones. Oh, we're just going to go do it for a walk. And you know, you don't have to do this, these extravagant things, right? You don't have no, to go spend a lot of money. You just need to go spend fun time together. And I, I can't wait to hear some feedback. Comment on this podcast. If you're getting the book, if you're implementing these things, make sure you go to 18 Summers and tell Jim. Jim and his wife love to hear stories of how these things get implemented and how they're succeeding in families. So I'll definitely keep you updated, Jim. I appreciate you taking the time with us, man. No, it's good seeing you again, bud. Take care. Yeah, you as well. Thanks for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. I know we usually we talk about real estate investing, but today and probably next week too, we're going to be talking about investing in your relationships because why become an investor if you can't figure out how to become better at investing in your relationships? See ya. Thanks for listening to the Free From Wall Street podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review and let us know what you think. 